I know you want to talk about the Blackhawks. Uh, Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, they re, uh, reacted to the trades that were made. Jonathan Taves said, um, it's become pretty clear the direction we're heading in as a franchise. I'm not going to lie. It was disheartening to see a couple good friends go. Regardless of what's to come in the future, I think this group has been through quite a bit this year on and off the ice. Obviously, life's been weird. It's been hard for a lot of people. Uh, and then Patrick Kane said about the Hagel trade, a uh, bit of a shocking move and that the future is, quote, a discussion for another day or over the summer, whatever it is. I'm happy here right now, and I'm just going to try to finish the season strong. Uh, Patrick Kane also had his 14th career, 20th goal season, tied Stan Mikita for team record, on only the second U.S. born player to do the same. Mike Badano, Keith Kachuk also did it as well. But, boys, I don't think it's going to be a, sh- a shock at all if either one or both of these guys are traded before their deals are up. What, uh, you agree or what? I do agree. Um, it's crazy to think of these guys not on the Blackhawks, and I think obviously Kane's going to get a lot more. Do you try to trade them as a tandem if that's what's going to happen? More than anything, though, was the displeasure you could tell in Taves' voice about not really being told and talked to about the, the Hagel move and how they Davidson had mentioned he was going to be in discussion with both of them moving forward for all these different moves, which I don't necessarily agree with. Like, you take over a team, it's going to be really hard if you're, like, taking the input of these two players with every single move you make. It's like to, he kind of handcuffed himself a little bit with that statement when he was hired at his press conference. Now, these guys deserve the respect of getting to talk about what's going to be their future, where they could end up going, what the team is looking at in terms of, do we need to get rid of these guys to start a full rebuild? I think that they're better off trying to get what they can for these guys and really kind of cutting ties. And I know that's going to crush some Chicago Blackhawks fans hearts and forever. These two, their, their numbers will be retired. They'll forever be legends for this city. It's the only captain Chicago, a lot of Chicago fans have ever had in, in Jonathan Taves, but that team's not going to win a Stanley Cup in a long time. And you might as well get back to trying to redo it all. And I know that sounds crazy. And I know Patrick Kane may never want to leave. And in that case, he will not have to leave. That'll be up to him. But where are you going to go? How are you going to go about retooling and re- rebuilding what they had with what's going on there now? So I don't know how it's going to end. But I think that if you're trying to get Patrick Kane... This summer, you're going to have to pay a boatload. And with what you could get for him and Jonathan Taves, you can really start a true rebuild in Chicago. Yeah, you don't really want a slow death either. You want to get it over exactly. as, as possible. So, and you, know, you, you mentioned it. Taves has the right to be frustrated. Um, it's also hard at the fact that it's new management and old management had made some moves. Um, you know, we could go through the list of them, the Panarin, blah, blah, blah. And they, they really put themselves between a rock and a hard place. And on top of that, also paying these guys as to what they deserved on what they earned. But like you said, like Taves, Taves isn't playing up to his 10 million. And like, he's got to be self-aware of that. Will there be some salary retained to where if he does go play somewhere third line center on a good team where they, they end up putting on a T for him where he can go maybe even compete for another cup. And you mentioned package deal potentially. I don't think that, I mean, I think the, the return could be a lot more, especially if you're going to go through those dog, dog days. You might as well have a shit team, accumulate all these types of draft picks, retain the salary, and it might even be a situation where you're just getting to the floor by, by, you know, by doing so. But it's, yeah, it's, it's just... Fuck the time the has come. It, time, it happens. It's, it it's happens. Over. It's and over. Honestly, it may not have happened without some horrific moves, Right. Because the team was completely mismanaged since 2015. Maybe this wouldn't have had to happen. And maybe they would have been able to do it the way the Bruins are doing. Now, granted, the Bruins have one cup. They have three. So it's different. But they're going to have to go through a full rebuild there. And it's also hard for them as superstars and what they've done for the organization. Because probably looking back even three years ago, they had it in their minds how it was all going to play out. It was going to be the storybook ending. So the bitterness in his voice, I can understand. But... At this point, it's like, hey, man, it was a pretty good run. You ended up getting your dough. Yeah, let's see. Where, let's and see they have one can... year left, correct? Yes, correct, correct. But okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd be shocked if both of them are still there. And and the thing is, too. Also, I don't understand how people are still surprised when a guy gets traded. I mean, Bobby O has been traded. Tom Brady's been traded. Wayne Gretzky's been on four teams. I just, I don't, I don't understand why people are still shocked. I don't think anybody would be shocked at this point. Me neither. Okay, sunk. <laughs>